There was a monument that was removed, and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Here's one of the headlines. Ellen's energy events are to close at Walt Disney World. <laughs> In case you didn't know, it was a ride at Disney World that featured a robot version of me, and the ride was about where energy comes from. Hashtag fun. And... <laughs> In part of the ride, the robot, me, fights a dinosaur, hashtag educational. The universe of energy opened to the public on October 1st, 1982, in the corner of Future World, as an opening day attraction at Epcot Center. As its name suggests, the pavilion was themed around the importance of energy and energy production. Originally, the pavilion was going to focus on solar energy, and early concepts featured a large parabolic mirror that would concentrate sunlight into a receptacle to harness electricity. However, when the pavilion gained a corporate sponsor, the oil and gas company Exxon, they didn't like this idea, as they wanted to place less emphasis on green energy like solar and more on their own energy. And so the pavilion's design was changed so it would focus more broadly on the various sources of energy and of course specifically on fossil fuels. Despite the shift towards fossil fuels, the eventual pavilion did maintain some of its solar roots, with the final building being constructed with over 80,000 solar cells covering it, and the roof being designed to face south with a 30 degree inclination to make the most of the path of the sun in central Florida. The electricity from these solar cells was then used to provide approximately 15% of the energy needed to power the electric ride vehicles at the pavilion's sole attraction, the also named Universe of Energy. In the original attraction, guests entered the pavilion to first watch a short pre-show film about the history of energy harvesting, played on a large multi-panelled screen known as the Kinetic Mosaic a screen which consisted of 100 rotatable prisms in a 25 by 4 pattern, which would rotate independently of one another to create pseudo 3D effects. At the end of the film, guests would then walk through a set of doors to be seated in another theatre, where they would watch a further film about the origins of life on Earth, and the formation of fossil fuels, after which their theatre seats would rotate 90 degrees to face a curtain, which would then lift into the air to reveal a primeval world. The guest seats would then move forward into the primeval world, where they would see several animatronic dinosaurs, including an iconic, classic Epcot scene of a Stegosaurus fighting an Allosaurus. At the end of their journey through the dinosaur scene, the seats would come to a stop in a second theatre, where they would watch another, slightly longer film, explaining current and future energy innovations. At the conclusion, the seating area would rotate once again, and guests would move back into the first theatre they originally set off in, where a final animated film would play across multiple screens around them, depicting the various ways in which mankind was benefiting from energy, accompanied by an upbeat 1980s Epcot song at the end of the attraction. Universe of Energy was one of Epcot's original Future World pavilions, and as a result it focused primarily on Epcot's original goal of education. While many of the other opening day attractions did have some excitement to them, Aside from the dinosaur scene, this attraction was a very serious, slow journey through back-to-back -back educational films. And while it was gone before I was born, from everything that I've seen, it looked incredibly boring. I think Universe of Energy was the weakest of the original Future World pavilions, and it really didn't help that the ride was nearly 40 minutes long. Meaning that once you walked through those doors, you had committed nearly an hour of your day to learning about the importance of oil production. Simply put, Universe of Energy was also such clear fossil fuel propaganda. Now, I know propaganda is a pretty heavy word to use, and every Epcot attraction that had a sponsor was, I guess, propaganda in some way or another, but with Universe of Energy being presented by Exxon, by the mid-90s the attraction was getting a little tough to justify. And with energy technology accelerating rapidly, the attraction was severely outdated and in desperate need of a refresh. And so in January 1996, with Eisner's Disney decade well underway and a desire to make Disney World and especially Epcot a more exciting place, the universe of energy closed for a refurbishment that would see maybe the strangest celebrity collaboration a Disney theme park has ever seen. Well, maybe apart from Superstar Limo, but... 
Does that really count? We've re-energized the universe of energy for the 25th with the new Ellen's Energy Adventure, starring Ellen DeGeneres and friends in a fun-filled look at life without energy. The pavilion would keep the universe of energy name, and the new attraction would have a similar energy theme. The ride's layouts and vehicles would remain the same, but with all the videos playing in the various theatres updated. Now, rather than simply being educational, the attraction would also involve a story featuring a celebrity guest comedian Ellen DeGeneres. It may seem a bit weird now to think that Ellen DeGeneres was given her own Disney theme park ride, but weirder things did happen in the 90s. And of course, back in 1996, Ellen was the star of a very popular sitcom on Disney's ABC network, and so the attraction became a sort of cross-promotional device. Plus, I mean, Jimmy Fallon's got a ride at Universal Studios now anyway. The new ride within Universe of Energy was named Ellen's Energy Crisis, although almost immediately after opening, this name was changed presumably due to Exxon not wanting to put their name next to the term Energy Crisis, and so the ride was renamed Ellen's Energy Adventure. So I've been searching everywhere for a reference to this ride as Ellen's Energy Crisis, and so far the only thing that I've found has been that one image. But I decided to look in this book that I have called Since the World Began, which is the 25th anniversary souvenir book from Walt Disney World. The 25th anniversary, of course, being 1996, which was the year that Ellen's opened. And I decided to look in the page for Universe of Energy, which is right here, and you see it's got the old photos of Universe of Energy there. And then here it says, the 1996 version of the Universe of Energy show, for example, has become Ellen's Energy Crisis. So there you go, that's the only reference apart from that one image that I found to the old name for this ride, and I found it in a book. The attraction was originally supposed to open in May 1996, but due to delays in the filming of video sequences was postponed by several months. This delay proved problematic for Disney, however, as around the same time, another future world pavilion, World of Motion, had also closed in preparation for its conversion to Test Track. And next door to that, the attraction Horizons was only an intermittent operation due to alleged structural issues in the building. This left only one pavilion, the fairly unpopular Wonders of Life, as the only place open in the entire left side of Future World during the busy summer season. To combat this, Disney decided to temporarily reopen a hastily put together summer 1996 version of Universe of Energy that operated from June 14th to September 2nd of that year, while the ride was partway through its remodeling to Ellen's Energy Adventure. This version was the original 1982 attraction, but with most of the special effects completely switched off, such as the kinetic mosaic being turned off and replaced with a simple screen projection, and many of the effects in the dinosaur scene being inactive. In fact, during the summer of 1996, an Ellen animatronic had already been installed in the dinosaur scene, and so this was quickly covered with some rock work to hide it from view. Although the Elasmosaurus animatronic had already been reprogrammed with Ellen in mind, leading to an awkward moment in the ride where it appears to lunge at the rocks for no particular reason. Finally though, on September 15th, 1996, Ellen's Energy Adventure opened to the public. The ride was a light-hearted, humorous reimagining of the original Universe of Energy attraction, featuring Ellen alongside science educator Bill Nye the Science Guy. The attraction opened once again with the pre-show, but now with the kinetic mosaic replaced by a simpler, multi-panel, ultra-wide projection screen. In the pre-show, Ellen is in her apartment watching an episode of the TV quiz show Jeopardy, when her neighbour Bill Nye the Science Guy enters looking for supplies for a new science experiment. On the episode of Jeopardy, she realises that one of the contestants is her old Old college rival, Judy Peterson, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, who now has a PhD in energy. Just energy. Nothing specific. And Ellen laments that energy isn't important. As Bill Nye leaves, Ellen then falls asleep watching the show and dreams that she's on an energy-themed version of Jeopardy, competing against Judy and Albert Einstein. Of course, not knowing anything about energy, she gets all of the questions wrong and falls behind as Judy quickly takes the lead. At the show's commercial break, Bill Nye then shows up to help Ellen learn as much as she can about energy to win the game show. To do that, he says he's going to take her back in time billions of years. At the end of the pre-show, guests then walk into the first theatre from the original universe of energy, where they sit down in the theatre cars. Then the second film starts on the screens in front of them, this time showing Ellen and Bill arriving at the very beginning of time to witness the Big Bang, and a sequence plays showing the formation of the universe and the Earth. They then arrive 220 million years in the past, where Bill explains to Ellen the formation of fossil fuels, 
the way that the bodies of prehistoric animals over millions of years compress to form oil, coal, and natural gas. As dinosaur roars can be heard in the distance, the theater cars then rotate 90 degrees and a curtain opens, revealing the dinosaur scene from the original attraction and the cars start moving forward through the scene. The concept of having a theatre show where the seats suddenly move forward to take you into a scene was the coolest part of the universe of energy. And when the pavilion first opened in 1982, was a novel innovation in ride technology. When I first rode Ellen's Energy Adventure when I was really young, it also blew my mind. Because even though when you're an adult it's pretty obvious that the seats will eventually start moving, as a kid, I had no idea it was about to happen. The dinosaur scene remains almost identical to the original version of the universe of energy, except for the addition of some Ellen animatronics placed among the existing ones, lost in the prehistoric world. The dinosaurs were also repainted in brighter, much more 90s colours, and some additional effects were added to increase guest immersion. The prehistoric world scene lasts seven minutes, as the ride vehicles slowly move past the numerous audio animatronic dinosaurs. And dinosaur names are always really complicated, and sometimes hard to say, but I've got a list here, so I'll give it a go. The dinosaurs include an Adaphosaurus, two Athropleura fighting each other, and a family of large Brontosaurus, or maybe Brontosauri, in a swamp, one of which sneezes onto guests as they ride past. Then there's this iconic scene of the Stegosaurus fighting the Allosaurus above guests on a cliff, and below, several Trachodon beneath a waterfall. There's several Ornithomimus, or Ornithomimus, I think? drinking from a pond, a pteranodon near an erupting volcano, and lastly, the scene of Ellen near a tidal pool, fighting off an elasmosaurus with a tree branch. This part of the ride was always really cool, and was definitely the heavy hitter part of the attraction. The area is really well decorated, and the special effects and animatronics make it feel really immersive. I also wonder if this area was originally inspired by the primeval world scene from the Disneyland Railroad in Anaheim, as that also features the same iconic scene of the two dinosaurs fighting. After leaving the dinosaur scene, guests then enter the second theatre, where this time they begin by listening to a prehistoric radio radio broadcast from KNRG News Radio. Then a 14 minute live action film plays where Bill Nye explains more about the harnessing of energy to Alan, going from the discovery of fire to the harnessing of wind for sailing ships to electricity and then oil drilling and beyond. The film goes on to discuss the energy sources and developments in technology of today or of 1996, such as solar energy farms, wind farms, hydroelectric power, nuclear power, and of course, fossil fuels, oil, coal, and natural gas. In fact, because the attraction did still have Exxon as a sponsor, it spends most of its time on oil, going over oil drilling and the hunt for more sources of oil. Eventually, Bill Nye and Ellen conclude that there are many sources of energy with no absolute answer on which one to use, and Ellen winds up back at the filming of Jeopardy to try again after the commercial break. Now with her new energy knowledge, Ellen begins storming through the questions, catching up and tying Judy for the lead, heading into the final round. Before they enter into Final Jeopardy, Albert Einstein leaves the show, winning a low energy light bulb as a prize. Judy and Ellen enter into Final Jeopardy, where their question is, this is the one source of power that will never run out. As the Jeopardy music plays, guests move back into the original theatre room for the conclusion of the attraction. In the final segment, Judy answers that nothing is a never ending source of power. Power. But Ellen instead answers correctly with what is brain power. Finally, Ellen wins Jeopardy and the crew celebrate with her. She then tells guests to look out for dinosaurs and the attraction ends. Ellen's energy adventure was definitely a welcome change to the massively outdated universe of energy. As far as remodels go, this one was pretty minor, with the entire layout remaining the same and the main drawer of the attraction, the dinosaur scene, being almost identical. But it still did a lot to modernise the universe of energy, and remove a lot of the heaviness and serious tone that came with the original. Although, I think there were still a lot of problems with the attraction. For starters, the ride was more or less the same length as it was before, just shy of 40 minutes. And I haven't been able to confirm this, but I believe that makes it the longest attraction that's ever been at Walt Disney World. Even stage shows like Fantasmic and Festival of the Lion King only last around 30 minutes. And while personally I did actually like the fact that it was a long attraction, as it meant the ride could tell a bigger story than most other theme park attractions, and it made it feel like a sort of immersive television show, for a lot of people the idea of being trapped learning about fossil fuels for nearly an hour 
made them avoid the ride entirely. I do also think that the Exxon sponsorship did give an odd underhanded vibe to a lot of the teaching the attraction was trying to do. I watched a ride through of the attraction again while researching for this video and it way too conveniently glosses over the effect of fossil fuels on global warming. And that's not just because it was 1996 either. When Bill Nye is discussing the various sources of energy, he's very careful to offer pros and cons to all of the renewable energies and describes nuclear power as expensive and controversial. But when he brings up coal, oil and gas, he never criticises it in the same way, instead focusing on how great it is the size of the operation to find new sources of fossil fuels. In fact, when he brings them up, Ellen even asks directly about global warming, and he simply dismisses it as a hot topic with lots of questions, and then just quickly moves on. For one thing, it's not sunny enough everywhere. And although the sunshine is free, Solar electricity still isn't that cheap. To power a whole city, you need a whole lot of windmills. And when the wind stops blowing, we'd be left in the dark, wouldn't we? No way, we just switch to another source of energy. We've already used many of the best sites. And sometimes building a dam can be pretty hard on an ecosystem. What about global warming? It's a hot topic with lots of questions. But it's one of the big reasons scientists are working on ways to burn fuels like coal more efficiently than ever. Lastly, the final problem that faced Ellen's energy adventure was that as time went on, the attraction became dated very quickly. As the ride entered the 21st century, it maintained its ultra 90s look a lot more than other attractions, simply because whenever you put live action segments in a ride, it's going to look dated fast. The whole scene in Ellen's apartment absolutely screams mid 90s, and the obvious allusion to this being sitcom Ellen suddenly felt much older when that show ended in 1998. And of course, because of rapid innovation, all of the information about energy technology became old news almost as soon as the ride opened. For example, Bill Nye tells Ellen that around 10% of the world's energy is renewable, whereas nowadays some estimates put that number up at 30%, although I've also seen some other estimates that put it at 11% which is incredibly depressing. <laughs> Exxon ceased sponsorship of the pavilion in 2004, which further confused things as now a Disney ride was simping for fossil fuels without being paid for it. Despite all of this, the attraction did actually survive well into the 2010s, although during its entire lifespan it was never a big draw of future worlds. For a lot of people, the reason to go on Ellen's energy adventure was pretty simple. It was air conditioned. But after nothing more than a handful of refurbishments to upgrade systems and repaint animatronics, by the mid 2010s, Ellen's energy adventure had run its course. And Disney finally looked to replace what had gained a reputation, maybe not wholly deserved, as Epcot's most boring ride. In 2017, it was announced that the Universe of Energy Pavilion would close, as a part of a massive overhaul of Epcot. In its space, the pavilion would be repurposed as a new indoor roller coaster called Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, and a closure date for Ellen's was set for August 13th, 2017. Despite the attraction being not very popular, news of the closure brought with it a large outpouring of love, with even Ellen herself commenting. And when the day finally arrived, a large group of hardcore Disney fans gathered to ride the attraction one last time. However, in an almost poetic turn of events, as guests entered the dinosaur scene for the final time, the ride cars broke down and the ride had to be evacuated. But seeing as it was the last ever time guests would be able to see the attraction, cast members decided to let the guests out into the ride to walk through the scene and get a look at the dinosaur animatronics up close. And with that final send off, the dinosaurs that had been there since 1982 and Ellen's energy adventure closed forever. I hope you've enjoyed my quick look back at the time when Ellen DeGeneres had a theme park attraction. As my last video was so massive in scope, I thought it would be fun to turn my attention to something a bit simpler this time, but I still wanted to cover what I thought was an interesting and underappreciated part of Disney history. I know I've criticised the universe of energy and its take on fossil fuels a lot, but I genuinely did enjoy this attraction. It wasn't an exciting ride, but it was fun in the way that living with the land is fun. Also, to be fair to the attraction, it did try and be fairly even-handed with how it dealt with renewable energy, but I imagine that with an oil and gas company as its sponsor, its hands were tied in many ways. Thanks for watching my video on Ellen's energy adventure. If there are any other interesting parts of Disney history you'd like me to cover next, please let me know. If you're new here and you haven't already, please consider subscribing, and as always, I'll see you next time.